Hello and welcome to my third cup of tea screencast. Uh, this time the topic is threads and stateful allocators and how they can be used for performance gains. I wanted to start with this quote by Bjarne Straustrup uh, and he talks about C++ 98 and then the allocators uh, and then he says that C++ 11 now uh, requires uh, containers to support stateful allocators. Uh, for example, an allocator with, which uses an arena from which to allocate. And that's what we're going to look into today. Uh, and we'll go, I'm going to use the following problem to illustrate this. Uh, let's say you have multiple vectors of int. And for each vector, you want to know the most frequent integer in, in that vector. Or any of them, if there are several. And we are going to parallelize the solution and look at the problems that arise. Um, so let's let's see what what I came up with here. Uh, I have the most frequent number function that just takes a vector and returns the most frequent integer from that vector. Then I have a wrapper for it which takes a vector of vectors and returns a vector of int. So there will be one. So there's one most frequent int from each of these input vectors, and this is simply uh, a loop basically, which calls most frequent number uh, for each input of vector. And we'll see why, why we need that later. And then in main, what, what I'm doing is I'm creating the inputs and I just randomly generate them. I use the same random seed. I generate a thousand vectors and each vector has 10,000 elements. And then elements are just uniformly distributed. Uh, so this loop is just just creating those uh, inputs. When we're done, it, it just uh, prints a line. And the rest of the main is uh, starting the threads and joining them, just waiting for, for all of them to, to be done. I'm creating n threads, where n is 8 in this case. Uh, and then the work item for each thread is as follows. The, we will measure the time it took to run most frequent numbers on the inputs. So actually every thread in this case will be working with the same inputs, the, the same random input I generated. But um, in reality, those may be you know, several different inputs. But in this case, it doesn't matter. We just want threads to do some work. And then it print the each thread, when it's done, it will print how many milliseconds it took. And we start the threads and we then wait for all, all of them. Now let's quickly look in the most frequent number. This is the core algorithm. I'm using an ordered map, just a standard an ordered map to track uh, how many occurrences of each number there were. So uh, the key is the number and the value is the number of occurrences. And then I'm just looping through all of the numbers in the input. I'm trying to push them to the map. If they're not there, then we start with zero. If they're there, uh, we just get the iterator from try and place. Then I increase the number of occurrences, and if that number was more than what we've seen before, then I re um, memorize here the 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 new count and uh, the the number that that was that that's the most frequently occurring number so far, and then in the end just return the max number. So this is pretty simple. I will share the code, so I don't want to go into too much detail here. But let's run this code. Uh, started generating, so there is, you know, sometimes there is some threads are racing over the console, but uh, overall, there is about uh, 1500 milliseconds of work. If uh, we run it again, Maybe we'll see, you know, some threads 1400, maybe some threads 1500. But uh, let's say 1500 was the was the average. I'll just put it here so that we remember. Now, if we profile that code, and I already already profiled it, what we will see in the summary that um, the the hot path actually it goes into some CRT base, which I assume is the C runtime. And it's pretty much just uh, the malloc call. It's the call to the malloc. 
and we spend about 33 percent of the time calling malak um, and waiting there so this is the black box but um, we can maybe assume that the time spent there is because of the heap contention the contention for the heap lock uh, basically the heap is shared between all threads and so to protect the heap structures we need there has to be some kind of lock or synchronization mechanism and uh, most of the time when we are trying to add something to the hash map and create a new element it is actually internally a linked list in the bucket so we have to dynamically create this uh, node in the list and for that we have to go to the heap and then wait for all other threads to to release the lock and so most of the time we're just waiting on this lock wouldn't it be nicer to have a local thread heap and then allocate from from that local heap and not wait on the lock uh, so that's what we're gonna do uh, I took stack allocator by Howard Tennant, but uh, there are other libraries probably. I couldn't find quickly any other libraries, but probably I, I'm sure there are other on GitHub. If you know of any, please let me know in the comments. And he describes how to write uh, C11 conforming allocator, and he gives a few, several examples of how to use it with a vector, an ordered set, small list. And there is a link to the allocator header itself, and it is also very short. And basically, you can read it in like 10 minutes. I don't want to go into too much detail here. Again, it's shared. Uh, but this is inside, it's basically the arena is just an array. And if you create this arena on the stack, then it will just take the, this, put this array on the stack. And there is a pointer, which is just the allocation is just going through this array increasing the pointer, allocating, increasing, allocating, increasing. And when the pointer reaches the end of the array, um, the allocator just switches to the operator new. So if you, if you read the allocate function there, it just, just uh, falls back to, to the normal allocator, standard new. But uh, we're gonna try. And all we need to do here, I already have short alloc uh, in my solution. So all I need to do is include the header here and add four more lines just four lines and i will need to comment out this uh, old map uh, so with the four lines let me explain here the local alloc is just the alias for the short alloc for this particular map uh, this is the value type then the size of the the array because it's on the stack and I don't want the stack overflow. I kept it to I kept it smaller. A hundred thousand shouldn't shouldn't cause a problem here. In the alignment you need to pick it, but the compiler will tell you if it's too small. So there will be a compilation error. Um, an order map is just the standard local order map is just an alias it's just a standard order map the only thing non-standard here non-default here is the local alloc i'm providing this allocator type then i need to create the arena on the stack i'm creating it and give it to the map so basically this ensures that arena outlives the map because this is all on the stack and the map will be destroyed and all the internal allocations will be returned before we destroy the arena now let's try to run this one everything else is the same because arena type uh, because map type is the same um, the api is the same now we what we see is that it's almost two times faster than than before so it used to be 1500 milliseconds now it's 700 and if we profile this code then what we will see that there is very little time spent in operator new and uh, serum time base and if we look at the by node which is the the method in this internal list linked list that hash map uses um, we used to spend here in the standard unordered map we used to spend 35 percent here and in the new code we just spent four percent here so this is this is the huge gain and also maybe deallocations are faster as well so that's that's pretty much you know the effect of this local he local heap 
the only um, two notes I wanted to make here is that there's probably other allocators or you can imagine writing allocator which just creates this arena on the on the heap and then you will not have this limitation or you can use a larger arena if you want and obviously larger inputs will then uh, work fine another nice thing to have would be if you could check on this arena well were there any allocations outside the arena and if there were no allocations outside the arena then maybe it would be nice to tell an ordered map that hey you don't need to actually clean the, the list because in this case well there were no uh, objects uh, which need the structure so we could potentially just abandon that arena and let the let the allocator let the arena take care of that memory and just just abandon it it's on the stack but uh, i couldn't find any standard way to do that unfortunately so if you know let me know in the comments um and the last thing i want to point out is the importance of this reserve here now it is also important even in the in the original code with the standard and ordered map because this reserves enough buckets so that the map doesn't have to resize uh, during this loop and each, each size some resize can be pretty expensive um, but because it has to create new buckets and then rehash everything but uh, when we're using the stack allocator it's it's even more important uh, let's see what happens if I command it out. You will see that, that the performance is actually worse than it was without the stack allocator. I think the problem is that we just exhaust the stack allocator quickly because of the map rehashes and reallocations. It just uses this, this allocator quickly and then after that it has to go to the operator new every time but maybe there's some extra step now so it's slower uh, and so it's slower overall well i hope you enjoyed this cup of tea and um, if you liked it please share and let me know if you have any feedback in the comments see you next time